Do you like learning all of those tips and tricks that make your quilting look better? Well, if so, I've got a few for you today. So keep watching. Hi, it's Donna Robertson with Fabric Cafe, and today we're going to talk about some little tips and tricks on how to get better looking quilting with your iron, of all things. We're not even going to use the sewing machine quite yet. Well, we're going to use this quilt as our example, so come over here. Uh, this is a great beginner quilt. It's also a great quilt for people who just want to get a quilt done fast, even if they're super experienced. It goes together really fast and easy, but there are some tricks to make it go together even better. So all of your little points and corners will match up. So let me show you what those are, and we'll put this quilt over here on the table, and then we'll get to talking about this. Now, I remember when I was a little girl, um, now, I don't know whether everybody's mother did this, but I can remember when I was a little girl, my mom would dampen all the clothes and she would roll them up and she put them in a plastic bag and put them in the refrigerator so they would stay damp. And then she would turn on the soap opera and she would set up her iron and ironing board. And one at a time, she would take out these things and she would iron them. And I can remember her pushing and prodding and making all of the wrinkles get out of the clothing. That's my memory from being five or six years old. Now, there is a difference whenever you're quilting when to use damp, steam, or a spray starch. We're gonna talk about that. And also the difference between ironing and pressing. A lot of times we think of ironing where you're going back and forth like this. You can get your iron and you're pushing and you're, you're going back and forth every which way. You need to be careful about that when you're quilting because it will distort your fabric if it's damp. Whether you've used a great sizing like Best Press or you're using steam. So I'm going to show you when to use the steam and when not to use the steam. We'll start off by showing you one of our kits. Okay, we package our kits like this, and whenever they come in the mail to you, you'll have a free pattern and the three different fabrics. We actually get people that comment about how gorgeous the fabric is packaged, and we really do appreciate that. But when you take it out of your package, guess what? You've got a lot of little wrinkles and crinkles and things that you don't want to leave in there when you start cutting your fabric. So the first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to do a little bit of ironing with some spray starch or sizing like Mary Ellen's Best Press. Now what I usually do is I will lightly, don't push your iron around, I'm actually holding it lightly on top of the surface, but you want to do that, you can use your steam, you probably see that, and then if, you, if you'd like to give a little bit more body to your fabric, then you'll give it a little bit of spray with sizing, and that just basically causes your fabric to relax, and all of the wrinkles come out of it. So it's super simple. Now make sure that you've kind of let it dry before you start cutting at that point. So that's one time that you're going to use your um, steam and your spray sizing. So now let's look at the pattern. There are um, several times that we will cut just strips of fabric and utilize them, but then we also do something like this where we put multiple strips together. So in this particular quilt, we're using this big block. See this big 10 inch block that's over here. So we tell you to cut a 10 and a half inch strip. And when you do this, you begin to cut your blocks off of this strip. But once again, look what happened. Because I pressed that fabric whenever it was folded, I've got a fold right here. So we highly recommend that you take your fabric and you press that out of the fabric. And the way I do that, once again, is I use a little steam. You want to let your item sit on the surface for just a minute while it cools. If you start handling your fabric too soon, then that wrinkle will not completely relax. And we want it to completely relax so that you have a nice looking even. And see, looky there, 
there's still a little bit of a crease there. So let's use a little bit of Best Press. So we'll spray that and then we will give it another press. The difference between the ironing and the pressing is we're not going back and forth. We're just placing our iron on the surface and not pushing down, but allowing the heat to do the trick. All right, now look at it. And you can see that we've pressed that crease out of there and it's not going to appear in the middle of the block whenever you get ready to sew those together. And that means that you're going to truly get a 10 and a half inch square when you cut it off of that strip. Okay, the next thing that we're going to talk about is strip piecing. Now I showed you that picture. So your picture of this is uh, the strip piecing and we take two long pieces together and we sew it. Now I've already cut some units off of this, but we're going to sew it together. Now this often happens. For some reason, I, I did not technically look this up, but a lot of times, even though you're using high quality fabric, it might be a little bit more narrow on some of the fabrics than others. Don't worry about it. I always leave my selvages on when I, whenever I do the uh, strip piecing. I sew them together. One end is going to come out just a little bit wonky, but we will be cutting that off. On the other end, I trim it before I start cutting my units. Now, when we show you pictures like this, it's all opened up and pressed already. But I actually leave my strip piecing, uh, when it's just two pieces like this, I actually leave them together and I will cut my units off of the side. It will look like this. It makes it easy for me to do that. Okay, have you ever heard of setting your seams? Now, this is something that some people just skip and go right straight to uh, pressing where they, they press one way or the other, but we want you to set your seams first. Now what that does for you when you set your seams is it will lock your stitches together so that you get a much better press. So we're actually using a little bit of steam here, but we want this to just be locked together. So I'll press it one way I will flip it over and I will press it the other way. Okay, we're gonna leave that for just a second and then we're going to cut these units off of the side of the strip and they'll be cut just one right after another. Okay, the next thing is how do you press your units open after you've cut them off of the uh, strip assembly? Uh, I'm sure you've heard press to the dark side Sometimes people want to press open and you might see that there are differences between the two, but the main thing is you want your quilt to lie as flat as possible whenever you press your seams. I was a garment sewer when I first started quilting. I was self-taught. I had not taken any classes and so my tendency was to do what you do with garments and that is you press your seams open and for years I actually pressed my seams open even though other people said they should be pressed to the dark side because I didn't like the little complications that came with making sure that you're getting more intricate blocks that your seams are going the right way there's lots more tips on that and as we step through these tutorials you will be able to see how to handle those little situations at a later date. But for today, we're going to go ahead and do our press to the dark side. Now, this is the easiest way that I have found. We have a light and a dark fabric. It's pretty easy to see which one is which. We want to press to the dark side. In order to press to the dark side, this, the easiest way for me is to put the dark side up and turn your seam away from your body. Now, this is another thing that a lot of people might want to skip, but we encourage you to do it because it will make your life easier. I heard a, a one particular quilter use the terminology of you're going to now play the piano on your seam. And that's because you're not going to be stretching your fabric, but you just finger press. And while you're doing that finger pressing, you're just lightly pushing it to the back. And see, you've already started the 
process of pressing to the dark side because voila, there is your seam going to the dark side. So we finger pressed it. Now this is where you want to turn the, the steam off and do not use your best press yet. We're going to do that later. So I put it on and I very lightly press away from myself. Now I am not putting a lot of weight of the iron, so I'm not ironing, I am pressing. And then I just hold it there for a second. Okay, now we want this to cool a little before we actually pick it up and start moving it around. At this point, if you promise me you will not start sewing or doing anything else until it dries, you can use a little bit of best press because that will hold that in place. Okay, so I'm going to spray a little bit there and then I'm going to press and that is going to set that seam so it's going toward the dark side. It will not um, tend to, un to come undone, but you do want it to be dry and a little bit cooler. So you could line a bunch of these up on your ironing board and do that little step. So now I will pick it up and turn it over and you can see what a nice, neat press to the dark side that that is. I will then take it and do just a little bit more of the <laughs> best press and we will do it once again on the other side. Just hold it in place and allow it to relax those threads so they will lock together. And a little bit of coolness and there you go. A nicely pressed block. So now, whenever you're putting your blocks together, well, let me keep this over here because it's a nice background. When you put your blocks together, I have another one that I pressed earlier, and I have several that I pressed earlier, and you can see that they're all pressed and ready to put together. And if you'll glance over here, you can see how we have the same unit here and here, but we've turned one of them. So that's what we've done here. We've turned that around and we want these to go together. So whenever you put these together, you can see that the dark side and the light side, so you've got your dark put, pressed toward the dark and you have pressed for the dark there and they will lock together. And at that point, you will use your straight pins to put a pin on each one. So when you sit down to sew, you will, if, whenever you can, I prefer to make sure this one is going away from me so as it sews toward me, I can see this so that it doesn't get bent over in the uh, process. So when you start to sew, once again, you want this to be going away from the feed dogs and this will be going toward the feed dogs because you can see this and you'll be able to make sure that it doesn't get bent over because if you ever sewed and you end up with something that looks like that it's kind of maddening you want to take that out and do it all over again so at this point we're going to sew this right down here using our quarter inch measurement and as this goes over that bump, it's going to just nest right together and match up perfectly. Okay, so now we've got that seam uh, allowance in there. So we've sewn them together, and if they nested properly, as I was showing you, it will nest together perfectly. So we're going to pull this out, and remember this little trick? we're going to play the piano right on our seam allowance. So we do that both directions. And I would say that looks pretty good. So now we're going to take our dry iron once again, and we're going to press that. And we press away. And that, at this particular point, you're going to have some toward the dark and some toward the light because it's just the, um, proclivity of doing that seam. Let it rest just a little bit. We'll turn it over, but you're not going to see that because 
it has an extra layer of the light right there. Once again, we've got another program coming up which, where we will show you how you can take these and fan them out so that they are making a cool little circle. So you'll watch that for the next one. Now I've pressed that once, but I want to now use, once again, you could use your steam or you can use your best press because we are not going to be ironing again. Remember that motion I did that pushed away? That would be more of an ironing process. This is going to be a press. So we are pressing these. We're going to let it sit just a second and let it kind of cool a little and then we'll flip it over so you can see this. And there's your nested seams. Okay, so let's look at the quilt kit and then show you how you're going to place your blocks on this particular um, quilt. So this, this is the fabric that we've been using. The focus fabric will go in your position one your number two fabric is going to go in position two, which is the lightest of the remaining. And then the number three fabric is going to go in your number three position is your darkest. And it will also go here as your uh, accent blocks. So your number two fabric sort of comes to the back. Oh, sorry, I was about to take that away. Okay, this is Daisy Shimmer, 8021558. So Quick is the pattern, and it, the book that that pattern is in is Quilt Favorites. However, if you order one kit, you will get that pattern free um, with your kit. Okay, remember this? We just made this little block, and you've got to see how to make all those cute little corners come together. And so now let's place it on the actual quilt. So you can see that this would be your... Um, your four patch and this would be your large block this will get sewn together and then we will press toward the dark side which would be the focus fabric and that's going to make a great looking quilt once you finish your quilt top you're going to now move to your backing and your batting now when you buy a roll of batting you're going to be trimming it down to fit your uh, quilt top but always leave at least four inches on either side of the quilt top with the batting so that your quilter, your long arm quilter, will be able to mount it on her machine. But one of the things that happens the more you quilt is you start getting little pieces and parts of batting. So we have a product that we love around here because we can normally do five patched battings for quilts. So that saves a lot of money. So you can take all your pieces and parts and you're going to patchwork it. Well, whenever I was first a quilter, I would actually sit down and zigzag all those pieces together because I also have an economy-minded set when it came, comes to things like that. And I said to my long arm quilter, is it possible for you to use the zigzagged pieces of batting for the filler? Because I didn't know how long arm quilters worked. And she said, honey, don't do that. She said, you need to use heat press. And she sent me a picture of it. And we got this and saved myself a lot of time and money. Now, step one, if you're going to use the heat press batting together, you'll use two pieces of batting. And no matter how straight and even it looks when you put them together, you want to trim the edge that you are going to be um, putting together with the batting together. So we're going to put that here. We're going to take our uh, rotary cutter and our... Um, let me get this straightened up here. Our rotary cutter and our ruler. And we're going to trim off about a half inch or so. We want to make sure that this is straight. And you can see it's a little skinnier there than it is down here. So we're going to cut that off. Make sure you have two pieces because and that they're whole. If you have a piece that all of a sudden it's not there down here, then you know you need to move over and trim again. Now, once we get that side trimmed, we're going to put that together with batting, the batting together. So let's put this here. We're going to put this on the ironing board and we're going to match that up.
you don't have to worry about the sides down here unless you're adding another piece because you could actually put another piece here. When you get ready to do that, you will trim it so that it matches. So we have these pieces. I'm going to turn this so we have the same side up. So you put those nice um, straight edges together and then you use the batting together with a dry iron. And this can work with polyester or cotton batting. I just prefer the cotton. We're going to use a dry iron and it is on the cotton setting. If you're using polyester, then you may want to put it on the poly, well you will want to put it on the poly setting of your iron. Now I've got those together and then we're going to cut this off. And I see down here on this end, I need to give it just a little bit more heat. All right. Now we'll let that kind of uh, cool down a little bit. And now we have a solid piece. I was worried about the seams, but I have never had a problem. You would never, ever see that. So that's how you use the batting together and save yourself a lot of money. Okay, now we're going to talk about the binding because after you get through putting your batting in there and sending it off to the long armor, you want to do your binding. And as you know, we use a one and a quarter inch binding. It is an economy binding that uses half as much fabric and it has a nice petite edge. I like that. So this is how you do that. You cut a one and a quarter inch. Oh, and let me point out, I'm going to be using the thermal thimbles. The thermal thimbles come in three different sizes in a package. So you'll have one to fit your thumb and whichever two fingers you use, I tend to use my index finger. So I put these on my fingers and I use them to keep from handling this when it's hot. So your first step is you're going to press your binding strip. You're going to press it open. The next thing you're going to do is fold it in half. So you fold that in half and you press again. If you accidentally touch the tip of the iron to one of these thermal thimbles, it keeps from burning. And also this is pretty warm whenever you're doing it. So you want to be able to pick it up and move it without burning yourself just because the fabric's hot. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this to the center. And I like to, I like to give it a little nudge with the tip of the iron down here on the end. And then I just flow it down and I'm doing that quarter inch. I am using a dry iron and I am pressing, even though I'm moving my iron, I'm not actually, um, I'm not actually pushing it, I'm actually just moving it slightly. Okay, after you've done that, now you want to fold it over and once again, you're going to use your iron to, and I heard a little puff, but it's really not supposed to be on steam right now because that will distort your fabric. So I'm going to hold that there. Then I'm going to use my best press because I'm through with the actual movement of the fabric. So I can now go back to a steam and the best press. I can give it a good shot of steam and that will set that action that I just did. And then I'm going to turn it over. And again, I can handle that without burning myself. I'm going to give it one more shot over here. Now what, what that's going to do is give you the perfect press for your, um, for your binding. You're going to sew that quarter inch onto the uh, front side of your quilt. And then whenever you um, fold it over to the front, you will, I mean over to the back, you're going to actually do a blind stitch on that. And we do have a tutorial on how to do the binding. Now another really important tip is how do you take these off? They go on very easily, but when you take them off, don't pull from the tip. You want to just roll them off and then they take on a life of their own and you put them down and they pop back out. It's kind of fun. You can do this just to entertain yourself. <laughs> So thermal thimbles and best press are great when you're doing your binding. So 
you've used all of these different things and you've used um, if you use spray starch or any kind of um, adhesive that might get on the bottom of your iron we have iron cleaning cloths that we find super helpful you will just place one of these cloths there's 10 in a package place it on the edge of your ironing board and then you can just drag your hot iron across it and it will take the gunk off of the bottom of your iron so um, best press does not tend to build up on your iron like so many of the starches and sizing but if you ever do need that like you've used one of the um, applique adhesives it will get on the bottom of your iron and then you don't want to use it on your other projects so it's a great way to clean your iron so i hope these pressing tips have been very valuable to you and that you will join us in the future for more tutorials <music>